Okay, so the coordinates of two points are A, 4 minus 1, and B, 7t. The line L1, uh, 3x minus 4y minus 12, is perpendicular to AB. Okay, so when I see this, I'm thinking, oh, uh, I'm thinking slopes, maybe the perpendicular distance formula. Um, you know the perpendicular distance between a point and a line, maybe. Um, I feel like it might be slopes, though. Okay, let's do slopes and see what happens. So the slope of this, it's a line, so we can get it by doing minus A over B, or we can rearrange for Y equals MX plus C. Either will work. Uh, I'm going to do this one. So it's minus 3 over minus 4, which is 3 quarters. Now, if my line is perpendicular, then I need to flip it and I need to change the sign. Yeah? Okay, so then the slope of the other bit, um, so we have 4 minus 1 and 7t. And that's x1, y1, x2, y2. And to get slope, we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, so t minus minus 1, which is plus 1, and 7 minus 4. So the slope is t plus 1 over 3. And this should be the same as this. So if they're perpendicular to each other, then I got the slope, I made the perpendicular slope, which means that should be the slope of that. That makes sense? Um, so if I just... So I think t plus 1 over 3 should equal minus 4 over 3. Yeah, so I think we can multiply across by 3 because it's, they're both 3s. So multiplying here by 3 will cancel that one, and multiplying here by 3 will cancel that one. So I get t plus 1 equals minus 4, Ugh. and then minus the 1 minus the 1. So t equals minus 5 is what I'm getting there. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to... B is now 7 minus 5. So find in terms of k the distance between the point. Okay, so I said this up here. This is literally distance between a point and that is a line. So distance between a point and a line is this yoke that I said might come into it, the perpendicular distance formula. So the perpendicular distance is ax1 plus by1 plus c over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so L1 is the line and L1 is 3x minus 4y minus 12 equals 0. So a is 3, b is minus 4 and c is minus 12. And then the point is 10k, so that is x1 and y1, and then it's a, b, and c. Uh, right, so we sub it in. So the perpendicular distance is, so 3 by 10 plus minus 4 by k minus 12 over the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. Yeah, just going to go over here. 
So the perpendicular distance is uh, 30 minus 4k minus 12 over, what's that, 9 and 16, so the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, square root, uh, or not the square root, sorry, the perpendicular distance is 18. minus 4k over 5. Okay, and the question said that it was going to be in terms of k, which means there's a, um, sorry, it's stuck there, but it means there's a k in my answer. So I'm done, that's it. So 10k is on the bisector of the angles between line L1 and L2, find possible values of K. So essentially, these are not plotted well, but this is L1, let's say, and this is L2. The bisector of that angle is the line that cuts it in half, so that this angle and this angle are equal. So if, if 10k is on this line, then the perpendicular distance to L1 should be the same as the perpendicular distance to L2. Okay, and this up here, this is the perpendicular distance to L1. So I think I just need to do the perpendicular distance to L2 and then equate them is what I'm thinking. So let's do it. So perpendicular distance is, so sorry, L2 is over here and we have A is 5, B is 12 and C is minus 20 and X1 and Y1 hasn't changed. So it is A, X1 plus B, Y1 plus C over square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. Okay, so the perpendicular distance is 50, so this is 50 minus 20 is 30 plus 12k over 25 and 144 is 169 and the square root of 169 is 13. Okay, so, and because the 10k is on the perpendicular bisector, it is the same distance from both. So I can let the perpendicular distance from the point to L1, which was 18 minus 4k all over 5, equal the perpendicular distance to line 2, which is 30 plus 12k over 13. Okay, so modulus on both sides, there's not really a lot I can do except to square both sides. So let's do that. So I get 324, I'm just going to scroll down, minus 72k minus 72k plus 16k squared all over 25. And then the right hand side is 900, no, uh, plus 360k plus 360k plus 144k squared all over 169. Uh, cross multiply, 
So the 169 is going to multiply by this line and the 25 is going to multiply by this line. And we can do that because it's single fractions on either side of an equals. So these numbers are going to get pretty big. So 324 multiplied by 169 is 54,756. Um, these, sorry, these two make minus 144k. And then if I multiply that by 169, I get minus 24,336k. And then 16 times 169 is plus 2704k squared. So on the other side, we have 900 times 25 is 22,500. And here, 360 plus 360 is 720k and then multiply that by 25 is 18,000k and 144 by 25 is 3,600k squared. Right, uh, I'm going to bring everything right so I'm going to go that way with all of these. Yeah? Okay, so I have k squareds first is 3,600, and when I bring that across, it's gonna be minus 2704, so that is 896k squared. Next are the k's, so 18,000, and I'm gonna bring that across, plus oh, 24,336 is 42336. And then 22,500 and bring that across and make it a minus 54,756. 32256. Okay, I think I might have jumped a little bit there, but hopefully that made sense. So I brought the red one across and it became minus 2704, I brought the green one across and it became plus 24336 and I brought the yellow one across and it became minus 54,000. Uh, let's see if any of these work. Oh yeah, 42336 divided by 896. No, okay. Sorry, sometimes if you divide by the 896, it all just divides, but it didn't work. So what are we looking for here? Two possible values. Okay, I'm going to have to go minus b. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I'm just going to pause that because the phone's ringing. I will come back to you. 